And we're live. All right, we did it. We're here. Nice. The the ultimate chapter of One Piece. This is it right here. Ten nineteen. <laughs> you know why it's the ultimate chapter? It's because of this color spread. I'm gonna be real honest rules with you. Are rules, rules first are of rules. Rules are rules. Second of all, it's just me and Joe today. Mm -hmm. Um, and me is Willer, because Tyler is not feeling super well. But um, we're trying to record one of the podcast episodes later this week. So we're gonna let them rest up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this cover page is a banger. Yeah. Uh, the girls are looking great, but I think the star of the show is definitely Frankie here. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, great. I got a question for you. Is that watermelon pizza with pineapples on it? Yeah. <laughs> Shokugeki no Sanji, baby. <laughs> we should we should talk about those. I don't know if you haven't read the others. Who have you, Willer? No. Uh, I hate people like them, so I should check them out. Yeah, the the second one's got some hype mo has a hype moment in it, really cool. The third one is just, I think, kind of cute. Um, and then there's the Ace volumes that come out every once in a while too. Yeah. I really like this world where other Jump artists do One Piece side stories. Mm -hmm. I feel like when One Piece ends in a, in however many years. And they're gonna try to milk this series dry. <laughs> they can't make a two piece, so I think they might instead go like an anthology route. But I don't know if it'll be too popular. I I really love the Sanji ones because they're just kind of like they're little just Sanji side stories, and that's about it. And I think bring out the best of his character. But, nice. Yeah. Yeah, because no one except for Oda is stupid <laughs> enough to make Sanji as disgusting as he is all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this chapter, we're gonna do a quickie, let's try to keep this to ten minutes, but, um... <laughs> yeah. Basically, the first two pages are just catching us up on what we've been through and, like, where our, our, uh, monster trio is. Mm -hmm. Um, I like how Sanji's looking out for Frankie, um... Yeah, he's like, oh man, Frankie would love those lasers. And, uh, Luffy wants beat. Yeah. But, uh, I, yeah, I feel like... You could cut these pages out of this chapter because the real, the real star of the shows are the second and third things that happen. So the second is the Frankie Sasaki fight. Yeah, uh, I think it's safe to say that our theory that he's uh, Kokoro's son that we've been seeing around is not true, mm -hmm. un un unless, like, there's there's a possibility that these guys wake up with like awakened Zoans at some point. mm Hmm. Uh, but as it, it's looking like the raid's going pretty swimmingly, and th that's kind of the thing, like, Frankie and Jinbei effortlessly beat their opponents. Mm -hmm. Well, which... Jinbei sacrificed General Frankie, but still. Jinbei sacrificed General I mean, sorry, General Frankie. Frankie. <laughs> Frankie sacrificed General Frankie. Uh, my, my wording of everything today, and of yesterday, has been off. I called spheres orbs, yeah, and... How, how could you? <laughs> I know. Um... So he's got a screw sword, which is just weird. But also, I mean, <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in One Piece. It, I read this chapter at Willer's house a few days ago when it came out. And I was like, Oda has committed crimes against nature. How can yeah. he do this? I, I'm trying to, like, if you look at the panel where he actually starts rotating his head or rotating his fin thing... It, like, disconnects. Like, it feels just so wrong. Yeah. It just I, it just starts rotating. It doesn't make any fucking sense at all. It like, is absurd, and I don't think it's because he's a cyborg. People are like, oh, he's probably just a cyborg, like Queen. No, I think this is just stupid, but it made for the best fight in Onigashima yet for me. <laughs> I love um, such rocks. He's, He's taking out his own peeps. Oh my god, he's even chopping one of these person's hands. Yeah, like holy shit. That's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. uh, Frankie's fighting with the sword. It becomes an aerial battle, which he wasn't expecting, but we see moves like General Shield, and we see the rocket launchers. Like, we get a lot of Frankie's arsenal here. Uh, one of the highlights of this fight is definitely this backup scene here, where uh, Sasaki accidentally backs up. Instead of flying, or instead of shooting forward, <laughs> and he tries to play it off, and Rick is like, "You're a liar." <laughs> <laughs> um, we get some suplexes. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very much oddball matchup. We get uh, the V for victory slice, uh, uh, but we get a coup de burst. Like it's an action chapter. There's not much to say. I like how yeah. coup de burst can. Uh, or it's 
actually a portable Gao Cannon. I don't know if he's ever done that before. No. He, uh, he uses General Cannon, shoot Sasuke up, and then he jumps out of Frankie, and, like, he, like, barrel dives under him and just fires as he's rolling. Which, the finale to this fight looks great. I thought this was so cool. Yeah. And I'm gonna guess Sasaki's out, but, you know, like, the raid failing, you know, people bring it up, Mr. Morge brings it up all the time, the, the fan base kind of dunks on him, but some people agree with him. I, I personally think uh, Way Wano is, is a little lacking in emotional stakes, and things are going really easily, aside from the Kaido situation. Like, the Straw Hats are crushing it. Yeah. So, it makes me feel like the raid is fine, but also, because they're crushing it so hard, I could see this being a setup for a twist. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I think we're just going into the finale, and it's going to be, like, a very straightforward finale, which is, like, gonna make wano a little disappointing to me at mm -hmm. the end of the day where it's like it's this big war that had a bunch of characters but everything went kind of smoothly there, there's no emotional value compared to like marine Ford, where it's like white yeah. dies uh, ace dies uh, well i mean to be fair the, the samurai might be dead yeah the samurai might like actually be that dead. is true and once that hits us i think that's the thing right we don't believe it until it's like way after so mm -hmm. that might impact us yeah but I think uh, for someone who's reading the whole arc in one go, like, it, it would hit you a lot earlier than it's going to hit us. And it's probably going to, like, hit pretty well because uh, I quite like the samurai. They're not the most interesting allies of the I, Straw Hats. I think, actually, to, to back up a little bit, I think everything that involves, like, Kaido has been really well done emotionally yeah. and action pack wise Because it, it feels like this monster that they're going up against whereas but like when it comes to the topi ropo and everyone else it feels like we're fighting you know the indies lobby crew again like it's just everyone's kind of matched up and beating well, them it's like it's they're quick fights right yeah. oda's not spending too much time which i'm I, i'm getting what well, remember a multiple chapter discussions back i'm like as long as we get the chapter per like we mm -hmm. get to see some moves we've definitely seen all the Toby Ropo and the Straw Hat so far do cool attacks and like their strategy involved here. Like, I I love this. Like this fight was generally like we went through it fast, but like because it's just all it's action, just action. But I love this fight. It's the same uh, with was, uh, Jimbe's really fight funny. last chapter where it was just yeah. like that was cool. Like there would spot a whole bunch of theories, but like as a fight, it still was a great fight where it was just Jimbe standing up to this guy. And, Pop him in I'd the say face. this one, I, I like this one a little better because there's just more. The Jinbei chapter had mm -hmm. less of the fight and more talking. Yeah. Um, fair. This one had more like trading of blows. Mm -hmm. But uh, like it is going fairly easy, right? Mm -hmm. Even though they're shorter fights, the the Straw Hats aren't coming out of it too beat up. Frankie looks tired, but like, you know, he's not. He didn't get. These are the Toby Ropa. They're supposed to be fairly freaking strong. Yeah. You know. And and Queen is fighting Sanji right now. But Sanji doesn't seem to be struggling very yeah. much. Because fucking Sanji turned that boy into a fucking helicopter, weirdly enough. <laughs> <laughs> All dinosaurs fly. They're yeah. flying six. And then Zoro's gonna come back and he's gonna fight King, most King, likely. Guess, yeah. yeah. Uh give me one second, because I want to check to make sure that it's not something being dropped off. But... Okay. Uh -huh. We're back. I dog was freaking out. I thought I got things. I did not get things. No things for you, Joe. Mm -mm. But uh, where were we? Yeah, it's it's just going a little easy, uh, except for the Kaido situation, which you're right. Ha Kaido's been good. You know what has been a little disappointing is Big Mom. Mm -hmm. She's definitely getting sidelined. And, like, we love Big Mor Mom more than most people in the fan base. When you add up both of our rankings, like, she's, she's probably in both of our top ten, and she ended mm -hmm. up in our top two of our joint yeah. tier list. Um which is nuts. I, like people, people are very upset about that. She wouldn't be like in my top three, but I think when you average you and I out, that's yeah. how she ended I, up that way. And we we've, we have plenty of discussion on why, at least for me, I think Big Bob is so good. And she at the end of the series, she's most likely going to fall down a few slots there. Uh, but it's, well, I mean, it depends if Oda yeah. keeps using her the way he is using her. Yeah. Um, which is like she's also here. I feel like he still has big plans for her. I do too. Like, it, and that's why I feel like she's gonna stay fairly high. Like, maybe not top two because like mm -hmm. that's what someone, I'm saying. Someone's gonna complete their character arc. Yeah. Like, uh, when Law or Zoro or like Sanji complete their character arcs, they're gonna shoot way up. You know, when mm -hmm. Usopp completes his character arc. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, antagonists have that bonus of they just get to show up and impact the story heavily and mm -hmm. make a, a mark on you. And immediately, But yeah, too. like, it, it depends what he does with Big Mom. Does she just get beaten by Kid and Law? And Kid's another interesting character because, like, mm -hmm. a lot of people wanted him to be a rival to Luffy, but he's kind of washed up already. Like, he is not at all close to Luffy yeah. as far as being Law? Like, people... I I watched some of the revelry with like the big One Piece YouTubers yeah. talk together. Everyone hates Kid. He's a lot of people's worst favorite character, like, least favorite character in the series. Because I think they had so much hope for him, and it didn't go anywhere. And I'm like, okay, I had like a tempered expectation yeah. of Kid. Um, so like I'm not like completely falling over about it. But if I was to go back to our tier list, I would definitely drop Kid because I think I had I did have hopes mm -hmm. for what he would do in Wano. But so far, he's like just another character in a very big arc it's not like law got his own arc and it was amazing he had so much law, yeah you know i don't i don't think we'll ever get like a kid centric arc i like kid for where he is right now like i really mm -hmm. like kid like i i love playing in pirate warriors 4 he's one of my favorite characters to play and then i i like his design i like his i like his fruit uh i i think kid has some parts of the story to play but i don't think he's gonna be on like law level but like, I love the potential of Kid, yeah. where, like, you could do a lot with his his crew and, like... Uh, but it, Oda didn't, you know? Like, he did the killer thing, and mm -hmm. that's it for now, so we'll have to see where Kid goes. It's so, been, like, Kid, two or three chapters since we saw Kid, which isn't too bad, all Kid, things but, considered. But all he's doing is being another fighter, you know, and, and showing Luffy respect. Now, so Kid, Kid and Big Mom are being used in ways that, like, I hope... This isn't where your story ends. Yeah. I hope y'all still do a lot more in Wano and potentially. Yeah. I I still think the magnetism part of Kid is going to be important because that's our that's a huge thing in One Piece already, like with the yeah. island. So I feel like he has some sort of part to play in the future. Despite the theory that we were pulling for being wrong, I think the fact that he has ties to Vega Vegapunk is still on the table. I still think him being the navigator having magnetism is like still a big thing. I think like. There, there's that like kid is there and like i don't know if, like i feel like kid is still important in some reason but that might not be true and i'll be fine with it i think also what's interesting is that like if you look at kid now and compared to luffy back then like kid was ahead of the game and he was like top dog compared to the super doas um yeah by doing the I think, but i think that's why people were had such high hopes of yeah that, but and he was doing the opposite of what luffy was doing is that he was causing more chaos around the world than luffy was basically mm -hmm. But then we come to the new world, and he seems to be making, like, every mistake, whereas Luffy has been making every correct decision who he teams up with. And, that's... and I think that's a cool story, mm -hmm. and I think people look at it that way if that, if that is how Oda intends it. It's just hard when you're reading it weekly, yeah. and you're like, fuck, man, it's been ten years, and I've been expecting Kid to be a goat. Like, yeah, because, a, like, like character. basically, Kid failed at attacking, like, two Yonkos already. Yeah. He, f he failed at Big Mom. I th Did he No, Shanks. Shanks. He went for Shanks. No, he also failed at Big yeah. Mom. Oh, yeah, and Big Mom. Yeah. He, he's failed and then at he, everyone. And then he, tra he was setting up to go kill Kaido or attack Kaido, and then Apu betrayed them. So yeah. it, it just was like... And then you have, compared to Luffy, who um, makes Big Mom look like a clown the first time he ever interacts with her and gets him, Through like... the phone and the, and the fish. Yeah, yeah, and then, like, he goes to Whole Cake Island, disrupts that whole wedding, and gets a huge notoriety bonus comparably yeah. and, and now he's out here fighting kaido, kaido. like if like he, he's yeah he's making the moves yeah so like it's it really is like if kids the washed out supernova that's not necessarily a bad thing because he's there as almost kind of like a control group for luffy you know where it's it's like yeah he I just oda lets that idea breathe instead yeah. of like us having to be like well looking at the 10 panels that he has in the series like, <laughs> yeah yeah we need we, we just need a little more emphasis there and mm. i think people would accept it more if, if Oda emphasized and i think it. also like we're in the middle of a giant fight like we're yeah. not gonna have quiet time with kids like we got the yeah. most of it when they were in the jail together i think that was good like kind of a little bit side stories about kid and stuff and a little bit more of like like kid during that time was like still a jackass and like that mm -hmm. was his character, and then he begrudgingly accepts Luffy's help in that cell, and that's what gets him yeah. free. Uh, so and now I, he's teaming up with Law, and yeah. Doing their thing. So I think I think I like the Law big and the Law and Kid team up because I think that will show him a little bit more. And then maybe like at that point we get to like the the breather part of this. Law and Kid might have a discussion. Maybe he's used this D kid. I don't see that happening. No. But uh, but like I, but I think like he's still playing a big part. I feel like he is definitely connected to Vegapunk. 
mm-hmm. in some way. Um, just just because there's there's that whole scene with him looking at Punk Hazard and saying he wants to keep tabs on it or something. Like did that happen? Yeah, you you brought it up like when um, Caesar Clown was like making his like whole poison gas thing. Are you talking about Vega Punk or oh 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 kid yes. yeah watching, at Punk Hazard watching the broadcast yeah. Yes. So it's it's definitely I, I think he set up to set that up either to introduce Vega Punk or to talk about more about Vega Punk later yeah. or I could even see it where he has to fix the fucking like log poses because they got so far off the route that they've all like fucked up, you know. <laughs> Yeah, log poses have been a little irrelevant, which is upsetting. <laughs> which is weird, considering, like... It's because we've had, like... We've been on a mission, and we've had eternal poses. We're not... Advent- we haven't been adventuring for since, like, Punk Hazard, man. Mm-hmm. Like, we're just doing shit now. That I, Yeah, and that's, like, everyone's big, uh... Big negative thing about the New World. It's less adventurous and more of, like, all right, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing, yeah. which I get. And, like, there's still a lot of adventure in the islands, but the plot is just so much heavier. Mm-hmm. It does, so, in summary, yeah. uh... Good fight. Um, mm, mm, mm. It, yeah, there's one more thing. I was going to get to it. Uh, I mean, we'll do it now. Uh, yeah. That fruit is definitely the Kieran fruit IMO. Yeah. I uh, I think so, too. And I lear- it's co- Coincidentally, I learned about the Kieran just the other day when I was finishing up Yakuza 3. Uh, the <laughs> Kieran is a mythical creature that is supposedly stronger than the dragon, and there's a bunch of lore. Mm-hmm. But the Karen has, like, weird horns, but also other animal features, so it's kind of Chimera-esque. It's not like a Chimera dragon, you could say. So I, I think that's the fruit here. I think it's mythological interesting where, like, Yamato was, like, Kaido didn't give Yamato this fruit, you know? Yeah, uh, Yamato ate it. Like, just like how Luffy ate the yeah. fruit, just out of hunger. Um, So, I, I think that was a interesting tidbit here where it's like Kyle didn't want Yamato to have this power to leave and he was just saving it up. Does he say why? He just was just saving it. Never tended you to eat it. Uh, I mean, it's probably a fruit that rivals the dragon and mm-hmm. is closer to a real dragon than Kaido is. Maybe. Also, man, he looks so cool in this in this panel by it. Like, mm-hmm. his t- I didn't realize his tail was that long. Yeah. So, I'm getting like strong like Doflamingo law vibes here. In this setup, yeah, without the setup, uh, yeah, but like basically, where like Luffy was up there, and then he gets knocked down, and then Law was stuck up there with Do Flamingo, yeah, and, and so now we have Yamato stuck up there with uh, Kaido. Kaido. So I, there, my... this 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 work this has a different layer where like uh-huh. Yamato's actively holding back Kaido because Kaido mm-hmm. started killing everyone, like he he was going on a on a cleanup fest where he was gonna go try to just end the raid. And yeah. Yamato, and he started by killing Kinemon, mm-hmm. and then Yamato showed up too late. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have a killing, feeling, killing. Quote, quote. Uh, but this might potentially lead into a Yamato flashback or a Kaido Yamato flashback. I hope so. We really need it. Mm-hmm. But like, because that's looking at it, that's usually how it's set up. Is before the big climactic final fight with Luffy, you have the side character flashback. Like, yeah. All the way back to fucking uh, Drum, Skypea, Island, Skypea, Skypea, Drum, Drum Island. Island. Yeah. Like, like just like, literally right before Luffy puts his wall pulled, you cut to <laughs> the... That's the, one of the best ones, because the moment you're back, Luffy's finishing the punch. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I, I think that's where we're getting set for. So, I could, I could definitely see it if... But, like, there's so much already, shit already going on that isn't, like, being resolved yet, you know? Because at least with the Doflamingo f- flashback, or the Doflamingo fight in the Law flashback, we wrapped up the Zoro fight, we wrapped up uh, the Robin and uh, Kairos and everyone's fight up there, Hakuba, mm-hmm. like, everyone's fights got wrapped up, and it was just a Doflamingo fight left. And then Luffy shows back up and wins. Yeah. And it- then... But so like I can't... I can't tell if Oda's baiting us though because like this arc is already the longest arc like we can't how much more can he do but there's always the chance of Big Mom's pirates not being a uh, like used for a gag and actually showing up as a reverse here comes the cavalry mm-hmm. and, but like even then it might end up being a three or war I think that's like the biggest that that to me would be the biggest thing that oda could do is that the big mom pirates show up and then big mom decides that like i'm just gonna fuck with kaido now because his whole army's been turned at this point so yeah. he's so weak i could take him out i could take over the rest of the crew and i could get the one piece and be king of the pirates by myself yeah yeah that that's an interesting turn um i i do like i think we both want at least another layer of complexity to this mm-hmm. conflict right now because right now they showed up 
a lot of cool action happened. Um, we got, like, before they even showed up, we already had the emotional heartbeat of the arc, which is the Odin flashback. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many characters that the samurai deaths have been sparse. Yeah. So on a weekly read, it's easy to forget, like, that they were impactful, and mm -hmm. it also diminishes their impact somewhat because there's just so much going on. So, all, all, like, all in all, uh, Act 3 has been good, uh, but it's been a little easy. Uh, yeah. We and, we, and we want characters like Kid and Big Mom to not be relegated as to the side as they have been. Yeah. I, uh, it's, what else was there? Yeah, it just, it just seems to me that they're, they're because the other theme is, like, at the very start, there's a whole super saga. The big thing that was stated by Law and Luffy and not, not Luffy, but Law and Nami was pirate alliances never work out. That's the thing. I like, I, that's been reiterated two to three times throughout this arc, so it has to, like, that has to be has to pay off. complexity. Yeah. And if, like, if this was, like, before now, I would have said they go up and actually be kind of really easily, and then it's a three-way fight between Kid, Law, and Luffy, and that's, like, the big kind of, like, battle thing. That would be nuts. I but, mean, but beating Kaido easily would be such a That would be so like, such a dumb. Downer. But yeah. I think... So I think what happens because but you have to think about the inversion where it's like Luffy's there to prove things wrong like that's that's the whole like Luffy's big thing is that he goes to the world and proves that the way that the system thinks or it operates does not mean it always has to be that way. So I think like Big Mom betraying Kaido fulfills that pirates alliances don't work out thing, but then Luffy can prove that no, they can when you're actually trying to help the person you are with. You know. Yeah like with law that, that would be great i think that would be that would make this arc wrap up in a satisfying mm -hmm. way where it ranks high yeah as opposed to like because right now for me wano i could see it wrapping up where it's kind of one of the middle arcs which a lot of people love wano so mm -hmm. like I, i'm sure that's controversial <laughs> um because like, like I'm, I'm definitely enjoying it but compared to like Honestly, even compared to Dressrosa, which uh, I think a lot of people would rank lower, everyone's like, Wano's the best post-time skip arc. I'm like, first of all, neither of those touch whole cake, but that's besides the point. Even <laughs> Dress Dressrosa had, like, themes when you get down to it and, like, focuses on characters like Bellamy mm -hmm. and like Law. Like, like, you can see that story told satisfyingly throughout. So it might be a thing where, like, maybe it is a straightforward arc, but we just need to read it all in one go to appreciate yeah. it. But I do hope it just has those layers as well. Yeah, I, I agree. But, like, I feel like my big hope and prediction at the end of the Wano arc is that Law kind of realizes that Luffy needs to be the one that becomes King of the Pirates, and he accepts that. Well, but Law never really showed interest, though, in being King of the Pirates. Is that no, the kid accepting that? I But, like, I feel like... But I think, like, Law is going to be definitely the first one to step... Like, of the Supernovas, to step up and say, no, he is going to be King of the Pirates. Like, besides Zoro, who's also a Supernova, but he's yeah. in his crew, so he doesn't Yeah, really he's count. in the crew, yeah. Yeah. So, but, like, it's because we're at the point now where Luffy has started to let people from other countries believe in him and kind of show that faith. Mm -hmm. But he now needs to also find faith in other pirates right yeah he needs to surpass his peers yeah definitively and and i think that which that... we know see that's the thing like luffy the world might look at him equal to the other ones but that's because they cover up so much of the yeah. shit that he does uh we know luffy's always been beyond these guys at every step of the level mm -hmm. of, of the of the of the journey at least i have i've known that but like we need the world to like oh realize that luffy's way beyond his only rival is the yonkos mm -hmm. and the only yonkos left are going to be shanks and blackbeard yeah so. so i think i think like by the end of wano that needs to be start like shaking things up or setting that groundwork there that's that's what i would like to see because that sets us up in the final arc where he finally beats the yonko and then gets one piece or go fights the world government or whatever that is mm -hmm. because like the whole point like the thing about gold rogers that every pirate respected and believed in him yeah that was the huge the big thing and he he sailed around the world and defied the world government uh so that's that's what needs to happen and it, it kind of goes into that whole big party aspect is like he needs to have everybody there uh yeah so well we've overstayed our welcome yeah, well, you know, when, when you only got one chapter, it's a good time to just talk about... Talk about we... the arc in general. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that. Um, we don't get another one for two weeks. Oh, that's yeah. so sad. Uh, but I'm excited to see what happens next. 
I if I had to, I I don't know if we're gonna go to the Robin Brook fight or if we're getting uh, more Yamato stuff. Ah, uh, I would. S I, I would be down for Yamato stuff now and then Robin Brook and then Luffy gets there. Maybe you know. Maybe I think it's gonna be like I think one, two or three more pages of Yamato stuff. Either it's either gonna be Yamato stuff at the beginning or it's gonna be a continuous like Yamato stuff at the end of every chapter that he tells as this thing progresses because that's been mm. happening i think like at no i don't think la the end of the last chapter was yamato stuff it, it might be a new trend maybe uh but like i feel like we'll have sprinkles of bits of it here and there um, like last chapter ended with the end of the jembe fight so cr right there was no yamato stuff in there that it was like two three weeks ago when we last saw yamato stuff. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's oh, yeah. the thing that's why i kind of want to go into yamato now because getting uh Getting these tidbits and cutting it for me, I'd like to get a condensed Yamato sequence because we've never gotten a condensed Yamato sequence outside of uh, like his introductions. So I think mm -hmm. it's time that like sell me on this character. If this if this person is gonna join the crew, yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm one of the ten people on the planet that don't automatically love Yamato, but I need to be convinced, okay? Yeah. That like this this is a crew worthy character. More than Booba, please. <laughs> oh yeah, now all you carrots a furry so she can't join fuckers <laughs> enjoy your transgender furry let's see how y'all like that shit <laughs> uh well we can keep talking about yamato all day but we're gonna go ahead and cut it here because yes, that'd be just right. a whole other conversation but to the next time we'll be hopefully four or five weeks from now um, Bye 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 bye